So do you think beaver might be your spirit animal or are you seeing beavers a lot or maybe one moved into your neighborhood and you're just wondering, you know, what the meaning might be if it has a message for you? Well, keep listening because we're going to explore beaver as a spirit animal and uh, what this unique animal signifies and what it might be trying to tell you. Okay, so first of all, a beaver is a rodent. It belongs to the same family as mice, rats, squirrels, and so forth. Um, but unlike most rodents, it is adapted to live in an aquatic environment, and in particular, a what's known as a riparian environment, which means you're gonna, it's a river or a stream habitat. So it has a lot of adaptations to uh, help it to survive in that. Uh, you know, watery environment. We'll talk about those, um, you know, throughout this this video. Um, all right, so first thing that most people think of when they see a beaver or think about beavers is just busy as a beaver. Um, and that is one of its primary spirit animal meanings is industry, industriousness. Diligence, the, uh, the the willingness and ability to take action and to build and create, you know, what it is that you uh, want to see happen. Uh, so beavers will, of course, cut d down the trees, they'll chew them down, and they will not only use the tree bark and the little twigs as food, but they will actually dam up uh, the stream and create a pond and, you know, with the the tree branches, they build not only the dam, but they build what's known as a lodge, which is their nest or home in, in, in the middle of the pond that they create by creating the dam. Okay, so that takes a lot of work and also, uh, so we're looking at industry, or we're also looking at ingenuity. And there's also, if you look at the beaver's teeth, those also reflect that spirit animal meaning. Um, and teeth are, are very prominent in a beaver. Uh, they, uh, you know, if you've ever seen the, like the cartoon beavers, Bucky the Beaver, whatever, they have, I always have those great big teeth out in front. If you get close to a beaver and, and take a look, you'll notice that those teeth are bright orange. So that is due to a large amount of iron in the beaver's tooth enamel. So these teeth are adapted not just to be big and massive to, to cut down these, you know, gnaw away these trees, but also to be extremely, extremely hard. So quite a few symbolic meanings that we can glean from the teeth of the beaver. And um, one of these is decisiveness, the ability to um, to break down ideas and, and to make to make a decision based on those ideas, to see, you know, to actually cut into the core of a situation, cut into the core of an idea. It's um, really like almost like hyper focus in a very active way, right? Um, decisiveness. And that decisiveness is also echoed echoed at the other end of the beaver. They've got this this tail that is flat, um, unlike almost any other. I don't think of, I know of any other creature that has a flat tail that's horizontal like that. Um, in addition to using that as a rudder, and um, and they also actually use it to prop themselves up sometimes when they're sitting. But they'll slap the surface of the water with that flat tail, sound the alarm. Again, decisiveness and decis decisive action in an emergency situation. So all these are, are, are pretty positive things. Um, uh, the teeth of a beaver also can speak to, you know, being a sort of cutting, right? If you think of a cutting remark, um, so maybe a little bit more on the shadow side of beaver would be, kind of speaking forcefully or speaking in a cutting way. So if you have a lot of beaver energy, you know, watch the way you speak to people, 
Um, a lot of people with a lot of beaver energy will speak sort of in a sharp or gruff way. They may or may, you know, a lot of times they're not really necessarily meaning to be harsh, but it can come across that way. So um, something to keep in mind if you're working with beaver type people, just to keep in mind that they aren't always as harsh as they come across. On the other hand, if you are a beaver type of person, uh, just you might want to consider modulating either your volume or just the remarks that you make. And maybe bringing, learning a few lessons intact can, can be very helpful to a beaver person. Okay, so hand in hand with industry is the idea of wealth creation. And beaver has a lot of things about beaver that really connect with that idea of wealth and abundance and luxury. Uh, first of all, just, you know, the, the its ability to build stuff and, um, you know, just kind of wealth accumulation is big. There's some of the, the dams um, the beavers will will work on, and, and they'll, they'll work on it gener over generations, which uh, we'll get to in a little bit. Um, but they, they can be, you know, these dams can get very, very, very large. And so that's looking at, you know, just kind of infrastructure, the infrastructure behind creating wealth. And, and just as a side note, as we're talking about wealth, um, beavers, uh, and the other thing, that, another thing that beavers are really well known for is their fur. Um, back in the 19th century, they were um, actually very extensively hunted uh, uh, to their detriment, really, um, to, in, in North America, to send the beaver furs back to... Um, Europe to be made into ladies' hats and all sorts of stuff like that. So, um, but very, very luxurious, uh, soft, soft fur. And we'll talk a little bit more about the fur in, um, in, in a little bit. Interestingly, beavers, like I think I mentioned that they will work on these dams over generations, and they are one of the very, very, very few species that, that, that hoard food that will share that food they you know they share it within a, a, the family the family unit um, so this is wealth accumulation and also a kind of wealth with you know between within the family family wealth family money um, and generational wealth and you can actually expand that into um, you know, this, the side effects of this wealth creation on the, on the part of the beaver, it expands into its entire community because as the beaver builds its own structures for wealth creation, it creates an entire environment, um, creates this pond environment, right, which is, it tends to be a very ecologically rich environment and a lot of species will actually depend on beaver in order to you know have the, the the sort of environment or the sort of habitat that they need so it really um you know beaver isn't just working for its own benefit it inadvertently as a side benefit it benefits many many other species it is considered a keystone species because of this so this is a really, really important lesson in regards to your life purpose um, because there's a lot of, uh, and many, many people kind of struggle with the idea of um, kind of following your own thing. There's, it's, it's really easy to feel guilted into doing something else or uh, be feeling guilty about maybe earning money doing what you want to do and beaver is really showing us that um, when when we're truly in alignment with with the work that we're doing um, you know in the world if it's if it's really in alignment with us it will benefit everybody else around us as well and you know that if if, if that especially if that concerns you know building your own business um, you know, beavers are really good totem animal for like an entrepreneur and just really just 
you know, just showing us that as you build your business, you're going to be benefiting a lot more than just you and your own family. Assuming that this business is truly in alignment with your spiritual purpose. Now, the flip side, of course, is um, there's a lot of flip sides. So this this animal, I'm going to say it again, is a wonderful animal for anybody in business or entrepreneurs because it shows us both the positive, very positive, very positive, and extremely negative sides, right? So um, on the flip side, you get just like, you, you know, the, the, the trees being cut down and so forth. Let's speak a little bit about that because there um, are sometimes people don't like beavers moving into the neighborhood because they will, um, you know, really, really paint the trees and, and clear it out. And if you've ever been in um, an area where beavers have gone through, it's, it's, it's kind of devastating looking. Um, and so, and, and so that's why it's, it's so important if you've got a lot of beaver energy to really be aware of, like, am I really aligned with spirit? Because it's really easy to get that wealth creation bug. Um, you know, that's, that's, that's the dark side of um, this industry kind of thing, right? We've all seen it. Yeah, I don't think I have to expound on that too much. But again, when you are in alignment, keep in mind that the beaver, um, its favorite trees to grow um, are the fast growing trees. Aspen especially is one of their favorites. And the thing about aspen, it, it does grow very quickly. And so when you, um, you know, clear cut an area of aspen things will start growing back pretty quickly and um you know it's like the first tree that grows back so and, and a beaver in its correct environment um although it may at times look devastating it's actually you know it, it it's it fits in that environment and it does some really good things for the environment but it, it again it's got to be in the right place right in in the right context Okay, so take, let's take a look at the, the dam itself and the dam as something that, that blocks the flow of water, dams it up. So here we're speaking to water is the element that really speaks to the emotions. It symbolizes emotions. So we're looking at um, stopping the flow of emotions or regulating the emotions, right? So there's there's both things here. There's a lot of things that can be going on emotionally with with a beaver uh, totem or a spirit animal, right? If, you know, if, if you're getting that the beaver is speaking to the emotions, um, it could be uh, blocks in the emotions, right? It could be a, a stuck second chakra, like, you know, your sacral chakra. Look, if, if beaver's showing up, there may be issues with the, that sacral chakra. Um, sacral chakra, of course, regulates emotions and it also regulates creativity, okay? So if there's issues with creativity and issues, you know, that there, there are, because beavers and amazingly, remember, we have ingenuity and, and um, you know, industry. Those are all very creative things. Beaver's a huge second chakra animal. Um, but if so, so looking at blocked emotions can actually really affect that. Um, we're also looking at you know the ability to regulate because you're regulating the, the dam, right? So there's a difference between totally blocking and, and regulation. Learning to regulate the emotions and let things flow without actually blocking that can be a very huge challenge for beaver people um, you know the the being able to actually express the emotions um, knowing how to do that and learning how to do that in a way that's appropriate learning you know to to have that vulnerability to be able to express the, the emotions and feel you know safe and being able to do express them effectively to others without you know, being cutting or forceful, um, you know, that, that, that self-control of emotions. And it, it can also talk to regulation, um, the ability to regulate things. So whether or not it's emotions, it, it's kind of the ability to, it's that kind of stewardship, right? Um, 
Stewardship is another great big, um, great big uh, meaning uh, associated with with beaver, and uh, points to not just the the water flow, but the whole environmental thing, which we'll we'll get to in a little bit. All right, so another huge um, symbolic meaning of beaver is protection. So if you look at the beaver lodge itself, it's it definitely, um, you know, all this energy that the beaver is expanding to cut the trees and, and build the dam and so forth, it's all to protect the family, okay? So protection is a big thing. Family is another big one. Let's talk about protection first. Um, in addition to the lodge itself, we have several physical characteristics about the beaver that point to protection being a, uh, a big deal for this totem. Um, the, the nose and ear valves, it can actually, like it's got, you can think of beaver as having its own personal protective equipment, PPE, um, you know, which if you think of a little construction worker, right, a construction worker is going to have the the earplugs or the ear, um, you know, uh, sound muffs. They're, they may have a respirator. They may have safety goggles. And beavers got all this stuff built in. So they've got nostrils and ears even that they can actually close while they're swimming to keep the water out. And then they've got a really well-developed nictitating membrane or third eyelid. It's this clear membrane that closes over the eyes so that the beaver can actually swim. It's like having goggles that they can see. Although they don't really rely on their sight that much, um, but they do sort of have these little safety goggles. And finally, the lips being able to close kind of behind those front teeth that helps to um, keep them from um, inhaling water when they're swimming or carrying things in their in their mouths. So related to that idea of flow and also of wealth and of protection is the idea of like fiscal responsibility. So beaver person is probably going to be either very, very fiscally responsible, responsible with their money, or there, it, it could kind of flip and there could be a lot of profit leaks going on. There could be a lot of you know, not controlling the money very well because that would be sort of like that energy just um, kind of the shadow side of it or off balance, right? If it's um, sometimes things manifest in either extreme, okay? So if you're a beaver, a person, you, you may already be really good with money or you may really need help with money. Or if you think you're really good with money um, and can't figure out why, you know, things aren't as good as you think they should be. Look for the profit leaks. Look for places that you might be um, spending or losing money um, without even realizing it. You know, Beaver's always going to be plugging the the leaks or repairing the dam. So there, there's, there's a lot of a sense of monitoring and and staying on top of things, especially finance, finances. If beaver, is, if beaver has suddenly come forward for you, one of the things to consider is to just go take a moment, <laughs> take an, a couple hours and go over your finances with a fine tooth, tooth comb, see if something, anything in there is um, not, not the way it should be, or see what can be improved or what can be fixed. So another huge meaning, symbolic meaning of beaver is family. And we already talked about the whole generation and wealth building and 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 you know building things as a as a family. Um, beavers are monogamous, so it'll be male and female beaver that um, you know raise their litters together. It's like this nuclear family idea, right? That's a very beaver thing. Although they do will often have an extended family. Uh, the the young may stay with them for a little while before they go off and start their own families. Um, so they will always create the lodge and the moat, right, the, the dam, so that they have are able to protect that family before they even start it. 
um, the young will often actually stay and help raise the next litter, so very close families. And the young often will uh, settle pretty closely to the parents. They're, they're probably not going to go very far. Um, so we're looking at, um, you know, extended families. We're looking at if, if your beaver person, a family, or community will be very important to you. If you don't have a lot of blood family around, if maybe there's, um, you know, either you've lost your family, don't have a very large family, or maybe uh, you're just you know, not not really uh, connecting with your actual blood family, you're going to want to find some sort of surrogate family, a spiritual family, whatever it is, you know, find your church, find your friend group, find your tribes, tribe of some sort. It's really going to be important for you if you're a beaver person. So this idea of fraternity is really big beaver energy. And hand in hand with that, a beaver is a really very territorial animal. So they do maintain and they defend their territories. You know, can be pretty fierce. Uh, territory is a very big thing for beavers. They do not like intrud intruders. They can get aggressive. They can even get violent. So if you're a beaver person, watch your need for space, for one. Um, you probably, uh, you know, you'll, you'll want to really be aware of what's yours, what's somebody else's. A lot of beaver people, they'll, they'll be very cognizant of like the boundaries, who owns what, what's mine, what's yours, right? This is not the kind of totem that is really into just openly sharing everything, right? It does not mean that they're not big-hearted and generous. At, at, at times, but it means that they, they want to know where the boundaries are and they definitely will protect what's theirs. So if you are the kind of person that seems to share everything and, and Beaver's coming forward to you, it could be a lesson about boundaries, about learning your own autonomy and maybe, you know, sticking up for yourself, sticking up for your boundaries, being able to, here again, the idea of expressing your emotions, being able to speak your truth if you uh, just really need the space, being able to even recognize that you may need space, um, you know, that, that you have a right to your own possessions, to your own money, to your own space, to your own body, whatever it is, right? Um, and, and being able to express that, stick up for yourself, and, and defend it if necessary. Okay, so, so that said, beavers can be really good neighbors, right? Um, so territory holding beaver will get to know its neighbors and will be less aggressive towards neighbors if it knows its neighbors, right? So. Um, that old adage, good fences make good neighbors. It's a great one for beaver people. Um, and again, it kind of points to this whole idea of community and knowing where you're, knowing your place in the community. And again, like beaver people, like things that benefit the community, they can be really, really generous. Like if you look at a lot of the the, the 19th century industrialists and stuff, um, whatever you think of them, they, they a lot of them did actually, if you look at the, like the Carnegie Mellon Library, Andrew Carnegie giving lots of money for philanthropy. So philanthropy, again, there's that, that wealth building and stuff, the, the, um, beaver, beaver totem, beaver animal, or beaver people, excuse me, can be great philanthropists looking out for their community. So that leads into the next couple uh, topics that I do want to cover in terms of, of beaver meaning, um, one of which is the stewardship, the responsibility. And if you look at um, you know the, the whole focus on family, um, you know beaver energy really does have a lot to do with this the this, this stewardship, holding things together, um, responsibility. And it really does extend into uh, the community, the civic responsibility, financial responsibility, responsibility for family, you know, the, the, the wanting to be the provider. Um, and 
also definitely a huge point environmental responsibility. And we've already been talking about um, beaver representing the power to change the environment, the power to create the environment that you want to create, okay? Because beaver is this real creator animal, and it's very, very much, like we mentioned, a keystone uh, creature in the environment. Um, it does have its destructive capacity to, to really be destructive, but when it's in the right place, Place in the environment, it's extremely beneficial, right? Um, so beaver energy has a lot of power. If you've got a lot of beaver energy, you can really, you, you have huge power to change your own life circumstances, but beyond that, you've got huge power to change the life circumstances of everybody around you. And so there is where that responsibility comes in, because if you've got a lot of this energy, you there's a lot of responsibility there. So to be really, really aware of that will really, really help because, um, you know, the, the last couple centuries, we've seen a huge amount of beaver energy in, um, in the world. Uh, and, You know, it can really this the whole consumerism, materialistic mindset. That's that's really kind of this negative aspect of um, of the beaver. That when it's out of whack, when that's out of balance, right? So I'm just going to kind of sum up the beaver uh, spirit animal meanings, and um, I, I actually see this as an animal that reflects a lot of masculine energy, both the positive and the negative negative expressions of, of masculine energy. And like I said, again, it's, it's sort of like this whole cycle that we're just coming out of right now, moving more into a, 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 a more feminine kind of way of being on the earth. But we've come out of this huge kind of masculine cycle, right? And the beaver really, if, you could, if I could pick one animal to symbolize that whole kind of masculine energy that we're just kind of transitioning out of it would be the beaver. Um, again, both positive and negative, because I, I think it's really easy to look at, you know, that masculine energy and get really down on it. Um, and let's talk about that part first, because I want to end on a positive note, okay? So negative shadow aspects of beaver, workaholism is one, okay? That goes without saying, and with it, the associated stress, right? So all that stuff that, that we're experiencing, um, you know, that is tied up in this beaver totem. Uh, financial excess, uh, you know, or this consumerism, uh, materialism, overconsumption, um, you know, really just more and more and more and more. Um, and with it, the environmental degradation that goes with it, um, being overly controlling, territorial aggression. So we're looking at, you know, wars over, over you know, oil, wars over, um, you know, I guess like the, the expansionism, <laughs> you know, wars over territory, that kind of thing, um, cutting or overly forceful speech, all of this stuff um, is is really kind of epitomized in that beaver, the shadow side of beaver. And, but then we look at the positive side, and there's so much positive here too, okay? So it's really, really important when we're looking at this beaver energy and also masculine energy in general, not to throw the baby out with the bathwater. Um, there's so much amazingness <laughs> uh, wrapped up in this. And, um, you know, industriousness, indus industry, um, the, the ability to work and work hard to build something that's worth building, right? And we're all building a new, I mean, we are really right now looking at building a new society based on, you know, what we've learned from this whole cycle of uh, this whole masculine cycle that we're coming out of is what we just mentioned, these negative qualities. But, um, 
you know, building what's worth building. So let's, you know, we're, we're looking at building a new society. We need that kind of beaver energy because we're going to need to kind of build a new paradigm, build something like this, you know, this 4D earth that we're talking about wanting to build. We, we need this energy for that um, as well, as long as we stay very um, aware of what it is that we really want to build. There's that decisiveness. Can, can we be decisive about what is it that we really need and want? Not the stuff that we've been told or led to believe we need it, okay? Not operating out of fear or, you know, it's it's others. Let's let's think about how we can create wealth as a, um, you know, if we can look at the family of humanity instead of just, um, you know, the families of this particular nation or this particular family, we can start seeing humanity itself as a family there you go. I mean, we, we can start providing and protecting for all of humanity. Um, and, and what an amazing world we can build, right? When we start thinking about that, and not just humanity, but our fellow creatures on this planet, providing and protecting for all of us, being able, you know, there's that idea of the, the um, beaver being able to provide for and share the wealth with more than just itself individually. Um, so that well creation, luxury, being able to live a beautiful life and not just like a, here's something that speaks to like the idea of sustainable living. It does not mean that you have to be, uh, you know, shivering in the dark, <laughs> right? It, you can have a really good life and still live in harmony with the earth, right? In harmony with our environment. And, you know, environment, again, is one of these really positive aspects of beaver uh, regulation and being able to regulate our own behavior, being able to um, be self-aware and control our um, emotional reactions to things so that we can, um, you, you know, move forward in a way that, that, is stable and responsible okay so stewardship responsibility all these things these are all very very positive aspects of not just the beaver animal but actually the, the masculine archetype as well so um, I hope that you have found this um, <laughs> this video on beaver helpful uh, if you oh just a couple words on interpreting this because this is a lot there's a lot of symbolism tied up in beaver it uh, what i would encourage you to do is just you know once you're aware of all this stuff then it's time to uh, let your intuition speak to you what is it about beaver that's you know if a beaver is coming forward for you what is it about the beaver that's really calling is it is it maybe a particular part of its body and look into the meaning of that or is it a particular habit that it's have has or behavior um you know what is it that's that's calling to you that may give you a pointer as to what its meaning is for you so if you're interested in additional resources or would like to request a personal session i'm leaving links below Thank you so much for, uh, if you've gotten this far, I think you're probably pretty devoted to, to, to learning. Um, so thank you so much for sticking with this and um, would love to have you uh, subscribe if you uh, feel so inclined. Um, also appreciate your likes and your comments. If there's something about Beaver that you are aware of that I didn't cover in this, I would absolutely adore it if you would leave those insights below it there it, it could help a lot of other people so again thank you so much and we'll catch you again soon